Alright, so, um, I have a message for you guys, alright? I have a message for, specifically for those that are, uh, just straight up discouraged, man. They're discouraged into thinking that they're not, they can't make it to the kingdom of heaven. They're actually also encouraged into thinking that their sin is so great or their sins go so long, the list of sins goes so long that they think that it's impossible to make it to the kingdom of heaven. Okay? And um, I'm going to explain what that is right now. All right? What that is, is that the, that's the devil getting into your mind and getting into your heart. And he's trying to tell you that it is totally hopeless for you to get into the kingdom of God. He's telling you that it's totally hopeless for you to know who God is. It's totally hopeless for you. For for He's telling you that it's totally hopeless for God to accept you. All right? And the thing is, is that he's dead wrong. I mean, like, definitely in this Bible, the devil... Hey, listen, the Bible says that the devil is a liar. He, he, he is set out to kill, steal, and destroy. That means steal you, steal your soul, all right, away from you, steal your life away from you. Kill, kill basically any relationship or any connection that you may have with God or even, even the very thought of you having a, a, a relationship with God. And then he's set out there to de destroy, basically destroy, you know, humankind okay um if you don't know that he basically uh set i guess you could say uh, is going to war he went to war um with uh god's children and with humankind all right that's in um that's in genesis actually um any revelations um but i want to read this because like i know there's a lot of people out there that are just totally hopeless and they they just feel totally hopeless in their hearts and that's the devil trying to dig and dig and dig and then say that accept just he's just saying just accept that you're hopeless and that you're not going to be anything man let me tell you something you ain't got to listen to him at all all right you want to know why because of one name because of jesus christ one name jesus christ the name above all names and the devil knows that all right, that's why he's trying to discourage you so hard and so much. All right, I'm going to start reading into this. I'm, I'm on Ephesians 2, Ephesians chapter 2, okay, from 1 to 10. Okay, so it says, Once you were dead because of your disobedience and many sins, you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. Um, and also, the devil is also the ruler of this world, okay? Um, it says, He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we are subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. Okay, now, right here it says, All of us used to live that way. Every single one of us, listen, you are not alone. You're not alone in your sinful nature. You're not, you're not alone in not being perfect. You're not alone in the devil trying to play your mind and play your heart into thinking that you'll never make it to the kingdom of heaven. You're not alone. We didn't fall for his tricks as Christians, all right? So you don't have to fall for his tricks. You don't have to listen to him. You don't have to listen to him just totally, just, just, totally just tell you that you're not going to make it you can make it anyone can make it you want to know how i know if you look in in john chapter one it says that everyone was made through jesus and for jesus therefore jesus had the blueprint to creation okay he's the architect okay so since he was the architect and he had the blueprints for creation that means he created you he created your very soul. He created everything that is part of you. Okay? So, and therefore, since he created you and you were made for him, that means you are to return to him. You see, God created your soul. You came straight from God. So, since you 
came straight from God. God wanted you to not know your nature, but he wanted you to know Jesus Christ. Okay? And so he wanted you to know who Jesus Christ was so that you can return back to where you came from. Okay? Which is God. Return back to God. Okay? But he wants you to, to return back to God in a new nature. All right? In a godly nature. In a holy nature. In a nature of love. Okay? Um, and, of course, we, again, we all used to, hey, we all used to live sinfully. Okay? Some of us are still living in sin. Okay? Some of us are still living in sin. But you don't have to. You don't have to live in sin. Okay? Yes, we're going to sin here and there and stuff like that. But... If you would sin, then just repent, okay? Just repent, okay? God loves when you turn from your ways of sin, when you turn from your lifestyle of sin, and then if you mess up, man, just repent. He loves repentance. He loves people that repent, that says, hey, listen, I'm sorry that I did that, Lord. Lord, I'm sorry that I, I, I not, I'm not perfect, but you know what? I wasn't meant to be perfect, but I was meant to be perfect through Jesus Christ. Right? And I'm trying to be perfect. I'm trying. I, I want to be perfect. Just like Jesus Christ. But you know what? I know you didn't make me perfect. But at least I'm trying. I'm, I repent of this. I repent of that. All right? And people find the word repentance. They find it as just bad. They find it as like, you know, something they learn in Catholic school or something. Or some old school religious thing. Nah, man. Repent means that you are sorry for your sins that you have done. I mean, shouldn't we all be sorry for the sins we've done? That's originally, originally what God wants, okay? I just want to let people know that. That's what God wants. He wants us to re repent from our ways. He wants us to repent from our sins, okay? And he wants us to be more God-like. He wants us to grow in a new nature, amen? Uh, a godly nature. Um, but let me continue reading this. And I just, again, you are not alone. You are not alone in your sins, okay? We all sin, every single one of us on the face of the earth. Okay, let me continue reading this. Um, okay, uh, let me start from three all over again. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and incarnations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we are subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. But God is so rich in mercy, and He loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins. He gave us life when he raised Jesus Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us, seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Jesus Christ. So, because of God's mercy, because of God's mercy and what God has done for you to send his one and only son down for us, for our sins, for each and every single individual on the face of this earth. Our sins has been forgiven. Every sin has been forgiven, except, of course, the sin against the Holy Spirit, okay? Um, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Um, but the thing is, is that, like, he sent his son his one and only son for us, for us, for you, for me, for your sister, for your brother, for your mother, for your grandmother, for your cousin, for your friend, for your neighbor, everyone, everyone, okay? Just want to let people know that so he can see, so he can be, uh, so we can be absolved, of, of, resolved of our sins or resolved, either or, but it doesn't matter, like, so he, he can take away our sins and say that so he can give us another chance to get close to him again. It's kind of like start over again. Basically, it is. You start over again. All right? You start from the beginning. All right? Um, let me continue reading this. It says, So God can point us out in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness towards us, as shown in all he has done for us who are united with Jesus Christ. So, 
Um, so what that means is, is that like we as as Christians, um, we don't, we are the example. We are the example. We, again, you are not alone in this. There have been so many Christians that have done so much worse than you have. And they came to Christ. And of course, God has accepted them. Again, God accepts everyone that believes that his son is the son of God that died on the cross and was resurrected by the power of God. He accepts everyone who believes those things in Jesus Christ. Okay, that's all it takes. Now, of course, the devil is going to try to persuade you. He's going to try to persuade you that you're so bad. You've done the worst things in the world for so long and all this other stuff. And you did this and you did that. Don't you see? He's going to keep showing you and showing you and showing you. And he's going to tell you to keep accepting it and accepting it that you are never going to make it to the kingdom of heaven. And it's going to keep going on in your mind for who knows how long. Who knows how long? Could be years. Could be years. Don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. It's a trick. It's a, it's a deception. Right here in this Bible, it says that if you believe, again, if you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was sent down to die for your sins, and was resurrected, and that he is the Son of God, then there you go. There you go. It's a new start. It's a brand new start. All right? Don't believe the devil. He's a liar. He is a liar, right? And the thing is, is that like he's gonna try to deceive you and try to, um, he's gonna try to even speak in your own voice, okay? Try to put, you know, these little feelings and these little emotions in your mind to try and make you think that you are not good enough, but you are. If you believe in Jesus Christ and you believe that he was resurrected and he died for your sins. Amen. So, I'm going to continue reading this. Okay. Number eight. God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. See? So, God is giving you the gift of grace. He's giving you the gift of mercy. He's giving you forgiveness. He's giving you understanding, giving you the gift because uh, he understands human nature. So he understands what you're going through. He understands your pain. He understands everything that every single sin that has ever existed. Every single sin that has ever existed. He understands. He does. He does. Okay. And he understands. He understands yeah, he needs to be merciful towards us. He is merciful towards us. And he forgives us for our sins. Don't let the devil deceive you again. Don't let him do it. Okay? All right? Look to God. Focus on God. Focus on Jesus Christ. Focus on his teachings. Focus on his principles. Focus on his love. Because he has unbelievable, unbelievable love that you can't even believe. I'm telling you. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not playing. I'm not fronting. I'm, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, and it's there for you. It's there for you to grab. It's there for you to embrace. It's there for you to just hold on to. All right? So you can receive joy in the Lord. All right? So, um, and then number nine, it says, Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Jesus Christ so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago so he planned for us long ago a purpose each and every single individual on the face of this earth has a purpose okay and God gives you that purpose right no one else gives you that purpose the devil doesn't give you that purpose your boss doesn't give you that purpose your grandmother doesn't give you that purpose your mother doesn't give you that purpose no one else gives you that purpose god gave you a purpose all right he gave you a soul for a reason he he gave you a body for a reason he let you walk this earth for a reason don't believe anything else god gave you a purpose see this is why again this is why jesus christ had the blueprint for your life he had the blueprint for you to walk this earth and god gave you a purpose and that's why every again everybody was made through jesus christ for jesus christ specifically all right every single life on the face of the earth okay 
So, in response, in response to all that that I just said and that I just read in here, what is what is going to be your response to this? You know, are you going to let the devil just continue to just you know bash you and continue to just let the devil just speak to you and everything like that and say all these negative things about you, or are you going to look and focus on God? Are you going to focus on Jesus Christ's love? On his sacrifice that he sacrificed for you he didn't do this for no reason he didn't do it for you know for just one person or two people now he did it for everyone for everyone for you me everyone okay so and that's all I gotta say guys that's all I gotta say I mean I really pray I really pray and I really hope that you guys really take this in because there's a lot of people that are in pain and they just getting tormented by the devil again and again and again but it's not supposed to be that way it shouldn't be that way and you don't have to accept it you don't have to accept that destination that the devil keeps saying that you're gonna go on. no but God will accept you completely 100% if you believe in Jesus Christ all right so I just want to say I love you guys um, and uh, please read your Bible. Please, please pray, please, and 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 just focus fully on Jesus Christ's love. Focus on on His love all the way, because His love is unbelievable. It can't even be measured by human standards, but it can be measured by God's standards, which is totally unlimited. All right. Um, God first, kingdom first, and Jesus always come first. Amen.